Hey there, it's Boots Owen here. Welcome back to the channel. I've put up a few videos on how to wire universal washing machine motors, and the questions in the comment thread have asked, how do I wire a washing machine induction motor? And I guess this video will hopefully explain a little bit about the difference between the two and how to identify them, and then also how you would wire up an induction motor, and maybe why you wouldn't want to bother. And when I say wire up, I mean wire up directly off 220 volt uh, UK type mains electricity, which will basically be the same as most European types of electricity. So over here on the right, we have a motor out of a hot point. It's an ACC, 240 volt, 50 hertz, standard universal washing machine motor. How can you tell it's a universal motor? Well, it's got a commutator ring in here and it's got brushes, a pair of brushes coming into it. And there ain't much more to it than that. Looks like this. <laughs> there really ain't much more to it. It's a universal washing machine motor. It can run on AC or DC. Um, I might put up a video in the future about how to run them off DC and how to control them off DC. I've been tinkering around a lot with that lately. So that's what the universal type looks like. But over here on the left, I've got a three phase type induction motor. That's This one is a washing machine motor. And you'll notice. The mounting arrangement is exactly the same, and on the motor swap video I put up for the Hawk Point of Qualtus, which this came out of, um, I just swapped it for a universal motor. And so I suppose I should say, first of all, why would you choose one of these over one of those? Well, the, the simple fact is that I can spot is it's lighter. This one has less copper and less aluminium in it. It's about a quarter lighter. I think this one runs at about four and a half kilos, and the one behind runs at about six kilos. So immediately you're saving on materials, you're saving on transport, um, storage costs, and all that kind of thing before it comes to your home. A kilo of copper, a kilo, a kilo of copper and aluminium is a lot. So that's a big saving for the manufacturer right there. So I've shown you in other videos how to wire up the universal type motor. This video is how to wire the induction type motor and let's have a look at the wiring first of all you've got five cables coming into the block on top you've got two browns that obviously go to the taco on the back let's forget about those they don't come into the equation here then you've got a white a red and a black those are the three phases going to the armatures inside there so to wire it for single phase you just throw the live and the neutral across any two of these three cables as simple as that. I've got it like this on the white and the black. Let's plug it in. So plug it in, it bounces all over the place. Why does it bounce everywhere? What a nightmare. I'll just plug it out for safety. Get that plug out of the way. So why does it bounce about so much? Well, if you've got single phase electricity, you've got a simple sine wave with a root mean square value of 220 volts. Simple as that. With three phase, let's get a different color. Well, no, no, blue will do as well. You've got, we need some more space here on the bench. One of the phases, exactly the same as the 220 volt. Then, out by a small amount, you've got the second phase. And then out by another small amount, you've got the third phase. So when I'm plugging it in across only a single phase, you're just getting a bounce every one of these periods. So for every peak, it's giving a rattle. It's just getting a kick from one third of the winding with every frequency of the electricity going through it. Whereas if it had the three phase electricity going through it, it would get a nice constant turning of the armature. Saying that wrong, nice constant turning of the rotor that's inside here from the windings in the armature or that surround the rotor. So it gets constantly pushed along little by little by the three phases. But with the single phase, it's turning, then getting a kick, turning a third, turning two thirds of the way or well, turning a full revolution and then getting another kick for a third of the way. And that's why it's bouncing all over the place. Let's think about, let's, let's, let's park that there for a moment and let's talk about how the armature is wired. Lovely dry wipe. 
leaves little bits of history behind. Right, so there's two ways to wire these, and I don't know which way this one's wired. The first is the star configuration. Star looks like that. Then the other one is delta configuration. Now let's get a better look at that. So if it was wired in th with three phases, you would have the three phases of electricity coming in and the wave going on one side, the other side, and the other side, one after the other after the other, causing that armature in the middle to rotate. I think the delta here is an easier way of describing it. You could just put the power in and out of that, but it, the, the wiring is irrelevant. It's just the shape of it here gives a better description. But we don't have that with single phase. Let's get rid of all of those three phases going in there and let's call single phase uh, red. Single phase, you've got your live and your neutral and you're just getting that wave across one side of the triangle. So you're, you're not using the other two phases and that's why it's hopping all over the place. So it's not really practical to direct wire one of these machine washing machine uh, three phase induction motors straight off the 220 voltage. Um, let's have another little experiment and think about the speed of rotation we're getting because we can't if I put uh, the normal voltage regulator that SCR thing the silicon uh, silicon controlled uh, rectifier I think it's called the SCR regulator try the thyristor thing that uh, I've shown let's get one of those looks a bit like this I've shown it in other videos if I put one of the power in through one of those it won't make a blind bit of difference to the speed that that motor goes around because this one doesn't worry about the voltage it only worries about the frequency of the wave that's going through it and I'll illustrate that point maybe in a minute as well so let's get this thing into a vice and think about the speed it's going at so let's plug that in there leave it switched off for the moment over here with the vice handle in the way which isn't particularly helpful I've got the motor mounted in a big heavy vice and that'll stop it vibrating and on the end of the armature or of the rotor shaft here even rotor is what it is I've got a little piece of reflective tape that works with a digital tachometer like this so if I switch that on it'll make some noise and I'll take a reading <laughs> So, memory 2984, that's the high speed we got, and just for fun, 2973 was the low speed, and there's an average speed there, 2978, so what was the high speed again? 2984, let's write that on the bench, get you out of the way, 2984, roughly equal to 3000, now, thinking about 3000, I'm thinking about what that number means. That's RPM. How we often consider revolutions of machines and whatnot. But we're not interested in RPM because electricity doesn't think in RPM. Electricity thinks in hertz. So we want to get from RPM, revs per minute, down to cycles per second, which is hertz. Got to divide it by 60. And then we get 50. That's the value if you divide 3000 by 60. 50 hertz. Hertz, which happens to be the frequency of 220 volt electricity in the UK. So it is spinning at the frequency of the mains electricity that's coming into it. Let's give it a different frequency now. So I've got two 20, well, two 12 volt uh, lead acid batteries here that are giving me 24 volts wired in series. And if I touch this off one of the, uh, one of the three points of the three phases, nothing happens. But what is bizarre is that when I go to rotate this rotor, it's stiff. It feels heavy. I let it off. It spins quite freely. But once I put the power on, it just gets stuck. Now I can overcome it, but it gets stuck. And if I was to put another battery on and another battery, it would become more and more difficult to turn. And that's because we're putting the power through one of the windings but it's not oscillating. It's not the frequency isn't it has no it has a frequency of zero or a frequency of yes, I guess zero because it's just stuck. It's not cycling, so the motor isn't inclined to turn, 
but the power is there so it just locks up the motor which is kind of a bizarre phenomenon but it illustrates that point about the uh the 50 hertz i was telling you about there earlier on so boots owen i can hear you ask that video didn't help me at all all it did was say that i couldn't do this which i know i can because i know the washing machine does it well yes inside in the back of the washing machine there's a little circuit board and the little circuit board will turn as far as i know your 220 volt mains back into uh, some kind of a DC electric and then back take that DC and split it up into three phases and create an artificial three phase electricity from the mains voltage for this little motor. You could do that, you could create a circuit board but you can't just go out and do it nice and easy. You can however go out and buy a VFD, a couple of hundred quid well spent for any three phase motor but if you were going to go out and buy a VFD and spend that kind of money on it you'd be as well to get a real motor and not some poxy little miniature washing machine motor that you found on the scrap heap or in an old washing machine. So in my opinion, there's about a pound or two of copper in there, pound and money, UK sterling. It's better to scrap this, get one of those that you can use with one of these little power controllers. Far better. That's just my two penneth on it. So like I say, they're lighter, Makes sense to, for the washing machine companies to use them, but doesn't make sense for the home hobbyists to use them really at this stage. Maybe things will change, maybe VFDs will come down. I know AVE's made a video recently about kind of the cheap end of the market, but then he goes back and uses the dear end of the market for the other kind of, uh, you know, for real tools, I suppose. I know that, um, what's that man's name? Photonic Induction has tried with one of these. He's knackered some of his tools trying to get them to work and just become <laughs> obsessed with crushing them so you know i i just can't see them being any good at the moment but maybe that day i'll change for now universal washing machine motors identifiable by the commutator ring and the brushes kind of old timey and heavy but hey they're easier for me to work with easier for you to work with and they're still in every bloody washing machine that you come across by and large apart from a few hot points maybe or some other ones here and there but yeah maybe this has been helpful Maybe you've learned a thing or two. Hope you have. Thanks for watching.